and KERT News Channel 3. Your news starts now. I'm going to head back to my car. I'm going to park along the side of the freeway. You can see just ashes flowing everywhere. It's just super intense. That's what it looked like about 24 hours ago. One of our own news videographers captured the embers flying as the fire jumped Pacific Coast Highway. The fire named Solomar because it threatened Solomar's beachfront homes. Good evening, I'm Tracy there. Thanks so much for joining us live at 11. Investigators say down power lines on private property sparked the Solomar fire on Christmas night. That fire broke out before 11 p.m. along the coast of Ventura County, and it is now burning toward the backcountry. Investigators believe the fire's origin lies somewhere in the Devil's Canyon area on leased oil field property just above Solomar Beach. The Solomar fire is now 60% contained, meaning the fire line surrounds more than half of it. Crews stopped it from growing beyond 1,236 acres, and two firefighters are being treated for minor injuries one to the knee and one the ankle. No homes were damaged. Firefighters are proud of residents for making sure their homes were sealed up so that embers couldn't get inside and start smoldering. And joining us now from the command center tonight is the incident public information officer, Andy Van Skyver. Andy, can you tell us what is happening on a night like this at the command post? Right. So tonight what we're doing is we are, we're working on um, our 300 firefighters that we currently have in the field. We have 600 assigned to the fire. We're bedding down 300, and we've positioned 300 in and around the ferry area in the case that the winds start to pick up. We're very concerned about the winds picking up tonight because they were a big problem last night. Now, I saw people building tents when I was out there. Some of the inmate uh, firefighters, are they sleeping in the tents tonight? We have we have some inmates that are sleeping in the tents tonight, and we have some other fire crews sleeping in some sleeping trailers. The oh. fire camp is a buzz with people moving all around and about, preparing for tomorrow's activities. And some of you guys are hunkering down, looking at the maps and making a game plan. That is true. We have our game plans already made for tomorrow, and it's been approved by the incident commander. And that's one of the plans that we do. We work 24 hours in advance to figure out what we're going to do. We have contingency plans in place, should our plans not work out, that we can modify the existing plans to put firefighters where they need to be. All right. Well, thanks for all you do, and thank you so much for joining us live on the phone tonight. The fire and the full moon made it a Christmas to remember. The sheriff's helicopter helped create a map showing the acreage burned. Elise Martinez shows us what it was like overnight. A volcano-like eruption lit up the hills above Solomar Beach in Ventura County on the eve of Christmas Day. 40 to 50 mile an hour winds shot embers and flames across the 101, drivers racing to escape. Our news crews were in the thick of the fire zone. I'm going to head back to my car. I'm going to park along the side of the freeway. You can see just ashes flowing everywhere. It's just super intense. Barely Despite the intense winds, helicopters made water drops in thick smoke under the cover of darkness. So we got two helicopters here right now. One just made a drop. In fact, stand by. We're going to get hit with the water here. And uh, they're going to come back around here. Here, comes, here he comes again. Solomar Beach residents packed up and left as they stared down an inferno inching closer to their homes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of us now. Uh, we're probably going to head to Santa Barbara. I think our house would be okay. It was built not too long ago. Uh, I don't think there's been a fire uh, here. Um, I'm 29 years old. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a fire uh, at this hillside here. In fact, this area hasn't burned since the 1970s, with a nearly five-year drought feeding the flames. In Santa Barbara, I'm Elise Martinez. 
And crews will survey that burn area tomorrow, which now could be even more prone to slides during the rainy season. Emmawood campground remains closed, but people can return to their beachfront homes in Solomar. Amanda Valdez caught up with some of them today. My dad called me at 1 in the morning and he said that there was a fire and it looked like it was out of control. A mandatory evacuation for homes in the Solomar Beach community. Residents left to scramble late at night after they could see the sparks and embers from a brush fire just miles away. The fire moved really fast. The wind was stronger than they'd ever felt the wind be up here. and We've had a house here since the 50s. Mark Shore says his parents and son had to drive further north to avoid any danger. That fire starting just before 11 p.m. on Christmas Day. We were starting to open our gifts last night. and We'd been watching the um, lawn furniture sail by on the deck. And, and my daughter-in-law suddenly leaped up and said, what's that? And, uh, and, you know, we all ran out there. Just down the road, homeowners along Faria Beach were asked to evacuate if they didn't feel safe. We did have our little bags packed and we were ready to go. But many of them along Faria Road choosing to stay home and watch the whole thing unfold. We hit the panic button immediately and uh, so we started watching the whole thing evolve. It spread down the hillside just at lightning speed. They say the winds they felt last night were like nothing they'd ever experienced before. And choosing to stay home was ultimately the right decision. At that point, um, we could see that the fire was spreading the opposite direction toward Ventura. And so uh, since the wind wasn't coming this way, it didn't seem that there was really any significant danger for us. Amanda Valdez, News Channel 3. Now you'll be able to see the charged rose side in the daybreak tomorrow. Uh, speaking of where people are staying, hotels close to the fire command post at the Ventura County Fairgrounds are sold out tonight. Some Cal Fire crews checked into the Doubletree Inn in Ventura. The hotels chose not to say whether they were offering a special rate, but crews are getting a warm place to sleep after working all night. And Sean Quinn was at the command post earlier today, but he is back in the studio with an update. Sean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, unfortunately, we do have another wind advisory that's going to kick into gear overnight tonight. Northeast winds 15 to 30 miles an hour, gusting to 50. Strongest, luckily, the strongest winds are expected east to northeast of the fire. So that means more or less off in this direction. Usually, just enough of that mountainside kind of funnels the wind a little bit to the south, or I should say maybe a little bit to the uh, to the to the yeah to the southeast of the actual fire line as you can see you might be in Oxnard see those winds tomorrow going up around 20 30 miles an hour as soon as you get up to usually right about the 33 the winds usually stop in the Santa Ana directions not to say that overnight tonight you couldn't see a little bit of an offshore flow developing anywhere in and around this fire and of course fires can create their own wind energy at any given point and with all the terrain and the dropping of the the slopes toward the mountains they're likely to see at least a little little bit of wind here and there, but it looks like the good news is those strong northerly winds that were coming in this direction have definitely subsided as of early this afternoon. So the good news is they're dealing with wind, but nothing like they saw just 24 hours ago. And Tracy, I'll be back in just a minute. We have another system coming, which could bring more of the same type of weather that we saw again with these strong winds just last night. So we're keeping our fingers crossed, but there could be more. All right, and speaking of the wind, intense winds wreaked havoc in other areas, too. Here's video from last night of a roof that was tossed into an intersection at Garden and Yananali in Santa Barbara. Heavy wind gusts there, and palm fronds and tree limbs were all over the place. They were tossed about making driving difficult. People may be spending part of their Sunday still cleaning up. A fatal accident to report now. It was caused, it caused a road closure tonight. It happened in Oxnard before 6 o'clock. Highway Patrol officers said three cars collided in the intersection of Santa Clara and Central Avenues. At least one person died at the scene. Northbound lanes of Santa Clara Avenues were shut down and a traffic there was diverted to westbound Central Avenues for several hours.
Santa Maria police are investigating a shooting that sent two people to the hospital. They say they got a call just after 7 o'clock about gunshots in the area of Via Rubio and East Jewel Streets on the northeast side of the city. When the first officers arrived in the neighborhood, police say two people were found with gunshot wounds inside a white sedan that was parked on Jewel Street. Neighbors say they heard the gunshots clear as a bell. And what did you hear? I heard four gunshots in my grandma's room, like her bedroom. And um, you're sure they were gunshots? Um, either fireworks or gunshots. I don't know. Either one of those. Were you scared or? Um, not really. I just kind of was like, oh, I looked at my aunt. My aunt was in the room with me and I just saw her. We just looked at each other and we continued on. Santa Maria police have not yet released information about the two gunshot victims. They also won't say how old they are or their condition. And no word yet on a motive for the shootings or whether arrests were made. Uh, there have been 11 homicides in the city of Santa Maria this year. Now to San Luis Obispo. That's where fire crews put out a large structure fire in the downtown area today. That fire broke out at the sub retail store around 11 this morning on the 300 block of Higuera Street. When crews arrived they found flames coming out of the back of the building. The building's occupants were evacuated there. Police blocked off the streets as well. No one was hurt. No word yet on the cause of that fire. A Lompoc man is behind bars for recent armed robberies. Lompoc police arrested Roderick Richardson on suspicion of those robberies yesterday. Police say the armed robberies happened earlier this week. The first at the Highway 1 liquor store on the 600 block of North H Street. A second robbery happened at Luz Chevron. That's on East Ocean Avenue. Police say several items linked Richardson to those crimes. And a burglar was caught on surveillance video Christmas morning at a popular record store. It happened at Salzer's Records in Ventura. Workers found a display case shattered. And police recognized a vagrant in the video and arrested Torin Davy at a nearby fast food restaurant. Looking for a warm place to stay? Warming centers are open throughout the Central Coast. We'll tell you where you can go to get out of the cold next. That's Ed Live at 11 from KUIT News Channel 3 and KCOY 12 Central Coast News. Just in time for what's expected to be a significant El Nino. The first alert weather app, powered by the largest weather team on local television. Immediate access to live radar so you can track the storm. 10-day forecast and your detailed day planner. Easy to use and customized to right where you are. Download the KEYT News Channel 3 First Alert Weather app. The best way to stay informed when weather becomes breaking news. With the unmatched power and resources of the First Alert Weather Team right in the palm of your hand. My Christmas List by Lily Bailiwick. This year, I don't wish for toys. I don't wish for clothes or games. It will help reduce air pollution. I don't wish for things wrapped in pretty paper or bows. I simply wish for something we can all share. Because to me, that's the best kind of gift. Take advantage of exceptional lease and finance offers today. The Fed raised rates, but Barry Ford still says zero. Get 0% zero financing for 60 months on a huge selection of new Ford vehicles, like Fusion, Escape, even the tough Ford F-150. That's no interest for five full years. Plus, get $1,000 holiday bonus cash and $1,000 trade-in assistance on select models. That's 0% plus up to $2,000. It's the Perry Ford Holiday Sales Event going on now. Perry's got it all. Adventure. It's in our DNA. The season of Adventure sales event is happening now. Land Rover. Above and beyond. 
Freedom Warming Centers are now open because of the cold weather. The homeless community is welcome at locations in Santa Barbara, Isla Vista, Carpinteria, Lompoc, and Santa Maria. The sites will remain open through December 29th, and pets are allowed. For more information on the Freedom Warming Centers, call 324-2372. A young man's body was located on Christmas Eve in the California aqueduct within Hesperia city limits. A day before the body was located, Sheriff Dispatch received an emergency call stating a man crashed his vehicle, a silver sedan. Police say the vehicle drove into the aqueduct after it broke through a fence and plunged into the swift waters there. Still ahead, a tornado killed several people in Dallas, Texas as flooding and high winds wreak havoc in many parts of the country. Cold temperatures, a lot of sunshine expected over the next couple of days, but those chilly overnights are also going to be coupled, of course, with our watch of the wind already turning a little bit offshore in the Oxnard Plain area. That's the telltale sign of a Santa Ana. We'll talk more about what that means for the fire as well as your seven-day forecast coming up in just a minute. I've worked these 7,000 acres for 36 years, and I want to see them protected for my kids. When I was asked about allowing fracking on my land, I did my homework. I talked to geologists and neighbors, and I looked at the facts behind the science. I found it's been done safely in Ventura County for decades, under the strictest environmental standards in the world. Read for yourself about the facts on how oil production and fracking work for Ventura County. Overnight breaking news, and the largest news team on local television is live. On scene with exclusive team coverage throughout the night. Keeping you on top of evacuations, shifting winds, freeway closures. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, News Channel 3 is where the news comes first. Hashtag KEYT family. Happy Show us your life. KEYT. Because we're in this together. For nearly 30 years now, the Santa Barbara community has joined me in supporting the year-round services of the Unity Shop. More than 22,000 people are referred here. Those are hard-working families on the path to self-sufficiency and seniors on fixed incomes. We provide free shopping for food and clothing needs, emergency services, job training and support, so much more. To find out how you can get involved and make a huge difference in your community, go online and visit unityshop.org. At News Channel 3, we know you hate ripoffs. No one wants to see the bad guy win. And when you hear about cover-ups and wasted tax dollars, you want something done about it. And that's why I'm here. He's tracked down scams, saved homes and jobs, uncovered waste, and gotten hundreds of thousands of your dollars back. He's C.J. Ward, the only investigative reporter on local television. News Channel 3 investigations are watching out for you. Click or call and put C.J. to work for you. This has been a holiday weekend of dangerous weather in much of the country. At least 21 deaths are blamed on tornadoes and storms. The South has been hit the worst. They're cleaning up tonight after bracing and bracing for more. The latest fatalities in Texas tonight. ABC's Chuck Syverston has our report. Tonight, a tornado strike in the Dallas area. At least five people reported killed as police and fire units scramble to do search and rescue. Everything is gone over here downstairs. Homes destroyed by a storm that menaced communities. In Alabama, the day after Christmas, this Santa's eye view shows the aftermath of a holiday that will be hard to forget. We was in the house having a good time, laughing and joking about memories of our family through the years. A quiet Christmas at home suddenly became a fight for survival. Everybody said, tornado, get down, and the lights went out. All of us fell to the floor. The holiday temperatures have been treacherously pleasant, creating ideal conditions for storms and tornadoes. I don't know what all was flying, and we went in our room to try to duck some of that. The high winds drove torrential rains that caused flooding across Alabama. The surging currents ripped this boathouse from its moorings and sent it bobbing downstream. Power company crews were on the job Saturday trying to restore electricity. A major winter storm is about to strike the central U.S. with the greatest threat of severe weather over parts of Texas. By Monday morning, expect ice and freezing rain to cause travel trouble. 
For now, some storm victims are clinging to the Christmas spirit. There's always a bright side. The sun is shining now, so maybe this uh, is the beginning of uh, something better. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. Got the cold and the hot, and it slams and then you, together. Yeah, the third ingredient is the storm system, which wow. just mixes up all that energy, and it's uh, very typical, usually in spring, but they can happen Gosh. any time of year, and whenever you have that mix of so the atmosphere. So sad. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as our weather, of course, we are focusing on the fire. We do have another wind advisory. It's in effect till noon Sunday. This is more of a Santa Ana direction. It's kind of, the winds typically start with these systems we see really solid out of the northwest. Then they clock around to the north, which is what we saw last night. And now they're turning a little more northeasterly, which is kind of good news for the fire area, the Solomar. Typically the Santa Ana has a hard time getting in there past those mountains. They stay usually a little farther to the south. But of course, we do have to watch out for the wind. Tonight, we'll keep kind of a west, northwesterly wind. Starts to turn more northeast easterly and it's already doing that as we speak humidity very very low and then we'll try to recover some of that just a little bit over the next couple of days temperatures very chilly out there some of those back country areas in and around Ojai could easily be in the upper 20s and there's your future cast with the winds kind of tightened it up looking around the lock and cheetah back up through Carpinteria, through Ventura, this corridor right here. You put the fire more or less up in this region right here, actually right about there. And that's exactly what we're going to be watching over the next few hours and as well the next couple of days because guess what? Another system roars in from the north straight down on top of us and there's a chance we could see another one of those little wind events. as brief, but another burst of northerly wind energy, which again, because of our coastline and because of these types of systems, there's a good chance we could see again a lot of wind energy and one of the reasons why actually there's a few reasons that come together a big pocket of cool air has rushed in with the jet stream so we get a few things happening here as well as the nature of our coastline uh, we face typically south and we have a nor our, our backs to the north so these winds really roar down the hills cold air rushing south very quickly air also sinks in a high pressure so you get what we call subsidence and as the air drops it typically picks up speed it also tends to warm it up but even though we're so cold it's warming a little bit and it also picks up the speed we also have tight pressure gradients uh, high rushing in behind the low and whenever it's real tight like that, you get a real burst of energy as the atmosphere is trying to balance itself out. Two to three hours of below temperature, of below 29 degrees. That means we have a freeze issue for the San Ynez Valley, as you can see right there. And again, we could have some crop damage. We also have widespread frost issues and freeze warning again, up and down the entire coastline, even right where that fire is. I mean, I saw snow above Ojai this morning with the fire right in front of it, which was a very interesting mix. Speaking of that, fire and ice, but we have a lot of warm, moist air coming up out of the Gulf, cold air slamming into it, and this is what we were talking with Tracy at the beginning. You get those reds and even purple cloud tops, the pinks, that's the highest cloud elevations, and that's where your severe weather, so it looks like San Angelo and as well back up toward Dallas, a lot of severe weather. Right now, currently seeing some 30s out there in some of those colder areas, and as well a few 40s and 50s. Looking at the future cast real quick, there it is. Another chance of rain roars into the region, but most of the energy, the wet stuff, stays to our north. And that basically means that we see more than likely just more cold temperatures and a lot of wind. Your overnight temperatures, again, on the cool side back tomorrow. We'll try to warm things up. We'll do, uh, well, a decent job of getting maybe some areas close to normal, but a lot of areas are going to remain kind of cool throughout the day. So there's your forecast again. We're going to keep an eye on that northeasterly wind. Quick look at Ventura. There it is. We don't warm up a whole lot with that Santa Ana. And then we kind of quiet it down, but we see another northerly wind event possibly by Monday and Tuesday. And um, yes, yeah, so we're kind of busy with that. The rain no systems kidding. we're waiting for. So. How do you say sub, uh, sub subsidence? Subsidence. Dropping. I yes. love learning new things. All right. All right. Thank you, Sean. A gene linked to Alzheimer's disease may one day lead to an earlier diagnosis. And if you're staying away from sweets this holiday season, you may have your liver to thank. That's coming up live at 11 from KYT News Channel 3 and KCOY 12 Central Coast News. If a new business is coming to town or another is going out of business, if it's going to cost you more or could save you money, you need to know about it. That's why News Channel 3 brings you Key to Your Finances every Wednesday at 6. Brought to you by Community West Bank.
Let's work together. It's the perfect time to get the gift you've waited for all year. The redesigned Accord with multi-angle rear view camera standard. Happy Honda Days end soon. Hurry in and you could get a great deal on the Accord. A best value in America. Now at your Honda dealer. At News Channel 3, you are part of the family. KYT family. Send us your shots of local news, hometown events, your family. We love KYT Channel 3. <laughs> 1908, Visiting Nurse and Hospice Care has provided compassionate and trusted care at home. We offer skilled nursing and rehabilitation to those recovering from illness or injury, companionship and support for independent living, free medical equipment through our loan closet, and end-of-life care at home and at our beautiful Serenity House. Visiting Nurse and Hospice Care, there for you and your family when you need us most. It's New Year's Week on Live. Let's have a toast. All week, we're toasting with Hollywood. What do you expect? It's a morning show, people. The celebration starts next live with Jane Spader from The Blacklist, plus Elizabeth McGovern from Downton Abbey. I love that Mark calls it Downtown Abbey, and it makes me laugh. It's Downton Abbey, and, like, you should, like, know that by now. Next live at 9 after GMA on Channel 3. Correspondent Omar Villafranca has some of our top health stories from Dallas. A hormone produced by the liver may influence your desire to eat sugar and drink alcohol. Researchers studying mice and monkeys found the hormone can help suppress the appetite for both. More research is needed to determine how mood also affects cravings for sugar and alcohol. Researchers believe two genetic variants could one day help doctors spot Alzheimer's sooner. The genes are linked to atrophy in regions of the brain that handle memory. Proteins produced by the genes can be detected in the blood, and that could lead to an Alzheimer's-related test. And Australian scientists have discovered how malaria parasites sabotage the body's ability to protect itself against the disease. Researchers say the parasites trigger a response that prevents the immune system from developing protective antibodies. Malaria is difficult to manage because the body does not develop long-lasting immunity to the disease, so people can become sick multiple times and spread the illness. The research could help scientists come up with better malaria vaccines. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Dallas. And we'll be right back. E-bikes, electric bikes of Santa Barbara is having a sale. All 2015 models must go. 2016 German-made high bikes equipped with Yamaha motors now in stock. Imagine the places an electric mountain bike can take you. Located on the corner of State Street and Haley with a full service department, we have the largest selection of electric bikes on the West Coast. Ride an electric bike and change your life. Toyota Thon is on. Wrap up a great year end deal on a Toyota today. Choose $750 customer cash on a new 2016 Corolla or $1,250 customer cash on a new 2016 Camry. Toyota, let's go places. Jaguar introduces our new generation of vehicles, built from lightweight aluminium to enhance performance. Connected like never before with the latest technology. We do love it when a plan comes together. Now all our new models are protected by best-in-class coverage, including complimentary scheduled maintenance. For great offers, visit your local Jaguar retailer during the Unwrap a Jaguar sales event. It's the photo that sparked a huge debate. The cold heart truth is that heroin kills. The question is, how do we stop it? You feel so alone when you go through it. The nation's drug czar weighs in on the crisis. And the device that may save a life. Plus, smart drugs. They promise to make you smarter, more motivated, and less forgetful. Do they work? We test them out next to us. Dr. Oz at 4, just before News Channel 3. Toyota Thon is on. Wrap up a great year-end deal on a Toyota today. 
Right now, get a Prius lift back with 0% APR financing for up to 60 months or $3,000 customer cash. Toyota, let's go places. We have just enough time for a last look, and just to let you know that the fire is 60% contained, we'll have a lot more coverage on it tomorrow as well. That's right. Well, let's go ahead and look at those seven-day forecasts again. They're so important right now with the fire issue. Showers are possible on Monday. It's another inside slider, Tracy, which means that the wind issue could come roaring right back again. No real forecast for that exactly yet, but that could easily happen. Again, the farther north you go, we could see showers, but then more than likely, it'll be another wind event. So, In the boy, last we week go. of the year. That's wow. right. Yeah, I forgot. At the end of that, we got All right. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.